Amen. Well, let's go to the Word this morning. I got a brand new series. I took the whole first service and never even got to my notes. Lord help it. I know, wow, it's right. That's crazy. I'm a lunatic. But I want us to go somewhere. I want us to go in a new series. I've studied this subject a good bit, but I'm in a series called Change My Mind. Change my mind. Say that with me. Change my mind. And I'll say it straight up. I'm my own worst enemy. This mind thing, you know. And uh, as a believer in Christ, there needs to be a mind change. The Bible says, let this mind, if you know it, say it with me, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let's learn that together. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So there's something going on there. Let's try it again. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay, we're going to see that. We're going to study that passage in great detail. That's uh, Philippians chapter 2. One more time. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You might wonder why the series title, Clark, changed my mind. Well, because I got a letter about a month ago. Not a nice letter. Started out telling me in a way I didn't know my history about our country. And then it said, some of us are educated in your congregation. And I just want to give you a little letter 101 tips. Writing somebody a letter, that's not a good way to start the letter. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, went on to proceed to tell me that while I'm sick, I don't think she wanted me to be sick per se, but while I'm sick, she hoped I would have time to reflect and change my mind on certain things. For example, abortion. Went on to say that most women get pregnant because men are basically mean. They're, that's how they keep a woman, have them get pregnant. You know, so and basically you men are pigs. Got it? I need to change my mind now and think that about you. Pig, 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 pig. Got it? And you're disgusting. That's a quote. And that, you know, an embryo, we, we eat chicken eggs. Just, it's not a baby. You're like a chicken. You know, it's just an egg. That ain't a baby chicken. So, see, I need to change my mind, you see. And now, because there's a battle for Gary's mind. And she wants me to have her mind. Last time I checked, the Bible didn't tell me to have her mind. The Bible, that's exactly right. It's heresy. The Bible told me to have the mind of Christ. It doesn't take much for me to say stuff or write a letter or make stuff up or tell my opinion on whatever. The challenge for us is to have the mind of Christ. The challenge for us is to have an authority in our life, and it's not you. Got it? The authority in our life is the word of the living God, and that's his word. But now, if you don't have that authority in your life and you don't think that's your authority in your life, you'll never have the mind of Christ, period. Because that's how you get the mind of Christ. What are you going to do, hum on the beach somewhere? Is that how you going to get it? How would that do in, in becoming an engineer? Did that work? You wish it went humming or did you go to class? You're not going to have the mind of Christ without his word, without his instruction. Are we all cool on that or what? So anyway, what a nice letter. So, just for the record, there's a battle for my mind. And I'm either do it her way or his way. Here's the answer. His way. So we're not going to be that. We're not going to believe that. We're not going to have that. It's not happening. That's the way it is. That makes you sad, happy trails. Okay? Then I got another letter. How y'all love this letter with Gary stuff? It's nice. Let's read letters together. So I got another letter. This one came after Easter Sunday morning. And you may have heard me say a little bit because I'm just going to tell it. It's what I'm going to do. 
You might not like me for that. If I write him something ugly, he's going to tell it. I sure am. That'll keep you from writing your crap, won't it? Anyway, come on, come on. No, I know y'all love me. You're not going to write me that mess. But anyway, uh, so I got another letter, and this one was on Easter Sunday morning sunrise. Called me a racist. Xenophobic, which people don't even know what that means. That's a new word everybody's throwing out now. But I'm that now, I found out. I have hate speech because on Easter Sunday morning, I preached Jesus Christ and him resurrected and said, Buddha isn't going to get you there, and Muhammad, who married a nine-year-old, it ain't going to work either. And so I get, I get blasted as a racist. <laughs> Since when? Jesus can't even have Easter anymore. We got a cancel culture out there. Go cancel out Jesus. Now, Jesus, you've got to share Easter now. You know, I think we got a battle going on, guys. Are y'all hearing me or not? Am I driving you up the wall? There's a battle going on for our mind. And I tell you what, the direction I'm seeing in our world, in our churches, in our government, it is going way off a cliff. I tell you that right now, it's a mess. And the church, the church is shot. The church is shot. You don't hear the truth in half the churches. It's pathetic. And they're trying to pacify people. I'm 59 years old in May. And I'm not going to pacify you. I'm ready to quit anyway. I'm a dangerous man. <laughs> Nothing more dangerous than a man ready to quit. Mark Myers, are you up there? He's away today. Mark Myers recently retired. He had a long job. And he said, he said, the last six months, I was a dangerous man. I mean, you know. <laughs> so my point is, guys, we're either going to do it God's way. Not we, me, me, me. And it has to be you, you, you. Son, are you all right with me so far, Luke? You're not used to this, are you? <laughs> is church more calm and stuff where you go? And he's real sweet, isn't he? Do you ever play sports? Are, are your coaches sweet? They're sweet. Do you lose? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know, I sort of talk like a coach a little bit because I want you to be better than when I found you. I want you to leave here today and say, man, I like that. I learned me something today. And I am, I'm setting up a bigger intro than I normally do to a series we're going to do. But son and, and sweetie, somebody's going to, there's a battle going on for our mind. And what are we going to believe? And like my, the, the band up here, their whole culture, Mitch, Joel, Chris, Sherry, this whole culture right here, Brian back there, that culture doesn't believe anything. That's the truth. They're friends. They don't believe anything. Much less do they believe in Jesus. They don't believe in anything. And so we're losing the battle. Amen? So we're in a series. So I get letters. Not a lot of letters. I hardly ever get any unkind letters. It just came at a perfect time for me to do a series. That's beautiful. Thank you. So the point is, though, there's a battle for our mind. Change my mind. And I've decided I, I need a mind change. Gary needs a mind change. I'm the first to admit it. I struggle. Okay? I struggle with my mind. Okay? How many else are like me? You struggle. Thought life, making good decisions sometimes, doing the right thing, maybe blowing up a little bit, you know, some stuff happening. Yeah. What I need? I need more of Jesus. Okay? But I don't need this. I don't need to change views that are right, that are biblical, that are good, and go off a cliff. Amen? So let's go this direction. And that's the plan. So change my mind. I still haven't got to the message yet. Because it's important what I'm telling you. There was a time in my life that was WC, my letters, without Christ. My family, we didn't know Christ. We didn't grow up in church. We didn't know anything about God. What we knew about God was GD. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? Say, we didn't know, praise Jesus. Are you kidding me? We'd hit you in the face. We didn't know anything like that. That's how I grew up. I'm the youngest of six. They're older than me. My sister, I just lost Janice, 12 years older than me. She raised me while mama worked. 
and I have another sister, 11 Ann. The two of them I had to say yes ma'am and no ma'am to. And they could beat my butt. That's right. And they did. So I grew up that way. We grew up in a Hellraiser's home. My mother was a drunk. Anybody else like me had drunk parents? That was me. The ice storm of 1969. I've never told y'all this to my knowledge. My mother was a waitress at Revel's Barbecue Lodge in Rockingham, North Carolina. And they were open serving the linemen who were coming to repair the lines. And a man and his crew came in. And the man I'm going to talk about, he, he told all his buddies to leave her $10 tip. That man was a man that my mother had an affair with on my daddy for years. I wonder if he didn't challenge his buddies. Put down $10 and see if I can't get in, her, you know, get in a sack with her. Y'all hear where I'm coming from? You hear my life or not say? Does that sound like Jesus' life or not? Our family didn't know Christ. We didn't have the mind of Christ. And I know if, you, if this is boring you to tears, it's just what it is. So that was my life. So my mother divorced my daddy when I was 11. My brothers and sisters were all gone. So the regular weekend thing for me was having a man come into my house and have sex with my mother down the hall. Does that sound like the Jesus life that he has planned for us? Yes or no? Amen. What I'm trying to say is there must have been a change somewhere. What happened to Gary? It's what needs to happen to you. God loves you. He loved me. He didn't do that to me. Sin did that to us. That's the way we were living and living in a hell hole. What's that about, man? So anyway, my mother ended up marrying that fellow. April of 77. Not long after that, he ain't coming home. Probably catting around now himself on mama. What goes around comes around. And you know, if you're catting around or cheating on your wife, I hope that happens to you. Did you hear what I said today or not? I'm an ugly fella, ain't I? I'll get letters over that one. And ma'am, if you're treating your husband like garbage like that and trash, I, you know, I hope it doesn't work out good for you. How many have ever been hurt like that? Let me put some, my hands up. That's just no good, is it? Yes or no? Can't we do better? Don't we want the mind of Christ or not? Say, say. We need help, man. Come on. And you know what? Help came. A man named Billy Graham. He's preaching on TV. My mother was drunk, Luke. Don't go to sleep on me. You got nice hair, though. My hair looked just like yours, so don't brag about it. So I had the thing down the middle and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. God bless you. Remember this day. But anyway, Mama was drunk. And you've heard my testimony. Many of you, many of you haven't. She's sitting in that recliner before the days of remote control. And Billy Graham comes on. Not because she wanted to watch him. It was just she was drunk and changed the channel. And the gospel broke through. The word of God. The word of God. You're loved. God loves you. God loves you. He gave his son for you. You can have hope. And I came home after party and that my mama looked at me. We're going to church in the morning. I cussed her out. I never cussed my mother in my life until that day. I cussed her out. You name it, I said it. Went to my room, wham, shut the door. Next morning, my crazy mama gets up, going to go to church. We don't even got a car. Where are we going to go? What are we doing? We're crazy people. And mama got up, and I went with her. I went with her. And I cussed her out all the way up Caroline Street, trying to get her to change her mind. But something had a hold on her. Y'all hear me or not? And I went, and you know what? I went there, wanted to punch somebody in the face. That's how I felt, you know, because I'm dirty. I'm no good. They all goody two shoes, folks, you know. That's what your head says. And that's the, what, that's, the, that's the aura we give off at a church, people. 
Y'all hear me or not? Be careful not to give off that aura around here. You're not better than nobody. Amen? And we all have hope. We all matter. Say, we all matter. We all matter. So, you know, I went to that church and they were nice to us. And I saw big Jimmy Wallace at the tire store. He was right there with them big old hands that changed him tires. That big Jimmy Wallace. So we went back the next week, went back the next week, and here's the quick story. The preacher preached on Revelation 3.20. If you know it, say it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I'll come into him and sup with him and he with me. And that old country preacher, Eddie Zimmerman's 82 today, struggling with a little bit of dementia, I think. And he, he would knock on that old thing, Jesus, stand at your heart's door knocking. And my mother went down from about the third row. And a lady talked to my mama. And she won't leave in me, so I went with her. And a man talked to me. And both my mother and I were saved that day. That day. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's a great, that's a real story. You might wonder, Clark, we've heard this. Why are you talking about this? I'm talking about it because we're going to launch a series here. It's called Change My Mind. How did you get your mind changed, Clark? I didn't know a Bible verse. Are you kidding me? Nothing. But I, I put my faith in Christ that day. What did you do? He, he showed me out of the Bible that I was a sinner. He didn't even need to show me that. Good grief. But he did. And then he showed me from God's Word that God loved me. Gary, God loves you. He gave his son for you, Gary. And he taught plain English just like I do. He wasn't highfalutin. He's a regular joker. And you know what? I was just dumb enough to believe what was in that book. Did y'all hear me? I mean, that's ugly for me to say that, ain't it? Sometimes we get so smart, we don't believe the Bible anymore. But I was just, I was just, I just believed that, that he said what he said was true, and he wasn't lying to me. And best I knew how, I just simply accepted it. My mother went home that day, took her Pap's Blue Ribbon, poured every one of them down the cast iron sink. Can we thank the Lord for that? People need to hear that. People need to hear that. We're in a world today where they want to keep you on drugs. They want to keep you on alcohol. They want to keep you, keep you, keep you, keep you. Because if we don't, something bad is going to happen. Well, something bad is going to happen if you stay on the crap. But I see when you change, when Jesus gets a hold of you, he did a mama, and she became a beautiful, beautiful saint of God. And oh, hell raising me, I started going to church, and I was changing my mind. A couple of pretty girls helped early on. Because I had a, you know, I had a rough pass there. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I didn't tell the first service, but... So I was going through this mind change thing. They, they, they picked a big joker, me, with the long hair to represent them in the youth group contest. Yeah. I was going against all these smarty people that knew the Bible. And I was going to represent our church. Me and another girl. And she knew the Bible at the back of her hand. So it was, I was just a token thing. So I said, well, why don't we memorize the book of James? Only five chapters. That was the book. If you're going to study that, you're going to get, have to give answers and you're going to win or lose. So I said, if we memorize it, we'll win. How hard is this? So that's what we did. We beat the snot out of them. Little did I know, I was having my mind changed. How many know a verse or two from the book of James? How about this one? The tongue is an unruly what? Evil, full of what? Deadly poison. What is your life? It's even a what? Paper that appears for a little time. You look at that. Isn't that a great book? That's a great book, man. I love that. Go to you now that say tomorrow we'll do this or that or buy and sell and get gain. What you should say if the Lord will. I mean, isn't that great? How about this one? Every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So little did I know God was helping me change my mind. I started getting three by five cards. This ain't a look at Gary show how great he is. I'm not trying to do that. I started getting three by five cards and writing down scripture. It was before cell phone days. And I'd stick them in the glove box of my truck. I'm just a young guy. How old are you? How much? 15. 
I was, I was a little older than 15 when I got saved, when I became a Christian in Christ. When somebody didn't shove it down my throat, but I willingly did it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, but I, even I got me a truck, and I started putting those three-by-five cars, I started memorizing Scripture. Like, all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who they're called according to His purpose. Amen? What a great Scripture. How about this? And I can do how many things? Through Christ who strengthens me. See, and my mind started changing. Are y'all getting the drift of how the mind changes? How about this one? I'm fearfully and wonderfully what? How about I knew you it before in your mother's what? Oh, no, I'm supposed to believe what you believe. How about I believe what he says? Amen or oh me? In the beginning, God did what? In the earth, amen. God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of what? And man became what? No, you did. It's just a big bang. You're here. No, God made us. You understand or not? So needless to say, I got a mind change. And that's how my life began and started with Christ. And, uh, but I was going to say this, though. I didn't say this to the early crowd, but I still had the old Geary mind. I still do. I'm a little better at it now than I used to be. Still screw up some. But, uh, <laughs> so I started dating a preacher's daughter. And the old me, you know, I had that, one of that sex thing and that sex drive and all that stuff. And I got a mind change because she told her father. And I learned from him that women are valuable, that women are not play toys or playthings, and that that's my daughter and she's precious to me. But he didn't do it in hate. He did it in love. He said, Gary, I love you and I understand. I'm a man like you and I have similar passions, but God has a better plan for your life. And I started to get the mind of Christ. Amen? I know I took time today. Pastors are here. And you normally I don't do this. I have the screen. I got the message right there. But I want to set this series up for us in the coming weeks, letting you know that that's how it happened in our life. Did you all hear me or not? How many with a hand raised would say, Pastor Gary, that's how it sort of happened in my life. Can I see some hands how you came to Christ? I mean, my, not my story is not your story, but you have your story, correct, Pastor? So now we're on this journey. But are you? Are you still without Christ? Are you? You might say, well, I wasn't like you. My mama wasn't a drunk. I wasn't a, I wasn't a, a you know, hell raiser. I didn't cuss my mom. I didn't do the things you did. Are you a sinner? God's a holy God. You're not going to go to heaven. It's not happening. Sin's not going to enter there. God made you in His image and His likeness. He loves you so much. He, you, he, you need his mind. He's the closest thing on earth, not somebody that writes you a letter. He's the closest thing on earth that you have to the mind that you need to have because you're made in his image and in, in his likeness. And because you've sinned and I've sinned, God sent his son Jesus to buy us back. Say buy us back. He walked with that. Remember Adam walked with God in the cool of the day? You remember that? Remember how they talked? And they commune together. And then Adam what? Sinned. And because Adam, we all what? We all sin, man. And death is passed upon all of us because all of us have sinned. I know a sinner when I, I know a holy person when I see him because they don't die. Sinners die. And so that's why Jesus came. He came as God's sacrifice to buy us back. And to bring us back into that relationship, it might sound kooky, it would have sounded kooky to me back then, but he did that to bring us back into that relationship with God that we can walk with him. Does that make sense? How many of us, without being arrogant, you could say, I know what it is to walk with God. Is anybody willing to say, I know what it is to walk with God? Aren't you glad that he walks with imperfect people, say? Wonder why he can walk with imperfect people because we believe in his what? Son, Jesus Christ. Are you saved today? If you died, do you know you'll go to heaven? 
Well, I'm a good person. No, you ain't. You need the Lord. I need Him. Amen. And so that's, that's what you need. Are you a Christian today? And as you become a follower of Christ, then this mind change. What does that mean? That means to have the mind of Christ. Let's look at a couple of scriptures and we'll quit. Roger said this is the longest intro I've ever had, 32 minutes. Yeah. It's okay. And if you're disappointed with my intro, it's okay. It's my story. And he gets the glory for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's my story. He gets the credit. Amen. Oh, I want to tell you this. Mind change. Mama saved. Gary saved. What about the sister we just buried yesterday? Before we were Christians, and my family might not like me saying this, but it's the truth. Before we were Christian family, before we put our faith in Christ, we are hell-raising family. And Christians and hell-raisers do this. My sister got pregnant. I was 11, 10 or 11 years old when it happened. My mother was not a Christian at that time. And I remember being in the back of her LTD. Y'all remember them? I mean, it was black with a white top. And my mother was meaner than a snake. She would knock you straight out. That's kind of mama I had. You see these, you know, a lot of the black, black shows have big mama. Gary had big mama. She would knock you out. I love that, baby. Amen. But she had that, that old black LTD. It reminded me of Cruella de Vil. <laughs> And so Janice gets pregnant. I'm in the back seat. Mama's driving. I got my BB gun. And Mama says, Mama goes to see approach this guy that got my sister pregnant. What did you do back in the day when you got somebody pregnant? You what? You married him. So Mama was old school. So she went to this guy, Chris. I'm sitting in the back seat. I don't know why I'm telling you a story, but it's just a story. And I'm sitting in the back seat, and uh, Mama gets out and says, you know, Janice is pregnant. You're going to marry her. And he said, no. I'm sitting in the back seat with the baby gun, and Mama does this. <laughs> Spits in his face. Why do I tell you that story? My sister Janice's life spiraled downward. Anybody relate to that? Her, her, she spiraled downward. The, one, the, the person we just laid to rest yesterday. But later, Mama got saved, I got saved. We didn't know where Janice was. Hadn't seen her in a while. I'm just a kid. I'm 16, 17, Luke, now. Your sister, you love your sister, you know? I hadn't seen my sister. And then she shows up around Thanksgiving or Christmas and she's got one of them old army jackets on. Y'all know them old army jackets? And she's like a bag of bones. She'd been walking the streets, living in Charlotte somewhere. But mom had had a heart change. And Gary had had a heart change and a mind change. And I wanted my sister to have that. And you know what? I loved her. Still do, Janice. And right there on that back old porch at the back of the old country house, I presented Christ to my sister like I'm doing to you today. And my sister just did that so easy. She said, I, I want to believe in the Lord. And she accepted Christ as her Savior. So she's in heaven today. What happened? Well, she had a, she had a mind change too. She had to work on it, right? Say, a little few years passed, she married a beautiful man named Rusty. He loved her more than anything. She had a great life. One day she wakes up, but he doesn't. The rest of her life she stayed single. She was poor. She chose that. She didn't mind. I tried to get her to move into a house I had. She said, no, I like my trailer. What am I saying? Mama needed Christ. Gary needed Christ. Janice needs Christ. Guess what? We need Christ, guys, yes or no? Y'all hear me or not? Okay? So, do you know the Lord? And once you know the Lord, can you have a mind, the mind of Christ? Two scriptures, Roger, we're done. 
Can my mind, my thinking be changed to be the mind of Jesus? To be like the mind of Christ. It sounds like weird, doesn't it? It sounds like a cult. No, it's not a cult. The answer is yes, I can have the mind of Christ. Say that with me. I can have the mind of What do you mean? Here's what the Bible says. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hid these things from the wise and the prudent, but you've re revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father... For so it seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered unto me, Jesus speaking, of my Father. No man knows the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. And then he says this incredible verse. Guys, we need our thinking changed. I sort of feel like I'm struggling with the message, but I think we're going to live, okay? We need our thinking changed. And here's what Jesus says. You might look at this verse differently now. He was talking about things that his father knows and that he knows. And he said, you're only going to get that through me. Did you hear me? I'm not racist when I say Jesus is the only way to God the Father. It's because he is. It's the only way you're going to get the mind of Christ. The thoughts of God, the ways of God, the life of God, to know how to live your life, to love your wife, to love your young'uns. This is incredible. This is incredible. And Jesus said, I am that gate. And then he says this. He didn't hit you over the head with a bat. He says, come unto me, all ye that what? Labor. Your head's killing you, man. And are heavy laden. And I'll give you what? I'll give you rest. Did mama get rest? Say. <laughs> she got rest, baby. He says, take my yoke on you. And in some killer scripture, say that with me. And do what? And do what? Learn of me. That's what this series will be in the next few weeks. They're going to be the words of Jesus. Learn of me. For I am what? How many need more of that? I'm meek and lowly in heart. And you'll find what? Rest for your souls. And I love this. For my yoke is what? And my burden's what? People don't come to Christ because it's so easy. That's the way it's supposed to be. He did all the work. So do you know the Lord today? I'm about done. I'm about wore out. I'm sweating like a pig up here. It's much easier to do the notes on the screen than it is to tell your life. But I hope you got the drift today of where we're headed. I hope you'll be here. If you're not, watch online. And let's learn how we can have the mind of Christ. Y'all hear me? We'll be in Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind, say it with me, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus has made this possible for us to have our thinking changed. One other testimony here in your hands. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I was a, I was a bad person. I was a hell raiser. I'm not perfect now, but I mean, God changed my life. Can I just see some hands that would say that to prove to people in this room? Even you, Dave? Big ball player Dave? You got saved, didn't you, buddy? He changed your life. I love you. Love your family. Amen. So that's our journey, guys. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let's thank the Lord for his word. And in my time with the testimony this morning, just laying the groundwork. Amen. Come on. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let's get up on our feet. I'm sure the preacher there, he's like, well, he didn't have much scripture. Well, this is how I do it sometimes. I laid out. And if you don't think there's scripture, go back and listen to the tape. How many verses I quoted? Amen or not? Say. And God gets all the credit. Amen. Don't leave here lost today. Please don't leave lost. Don't leave going, oh, I go to church. I'm a Catholic. Or go, I'm a Baptist. Why are you saying stuff like that? Why don't you say, I'm not sure. I'm sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. It's okay to be honest, isn't it? Say. And if that's the case, you're in a great place. I want to lead you in a prayer today where you can tell the Lord, I believe in you. Why don't we do that today? Amen or not? Let's pray together. 
Let's pray together. Just heads bowed. Miss Karen's playing quietly. <sighs> There's a great scripture. You might know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You mean maybe a drunk woman like my mother? Mm-hmm. Or a hellraiser like you? Mm-hmm. Or a sister who would walk the streets? Mm-hmm. God loved us. He loves you today. Would you put your faith in him today? Not in a preacher, not in a church, not in yourself, not in your accomplishments. Would you put your faith in Jesus Christ today? He died for you. He loves you. Can I lead you in that prayer today? Would you pray with me? I'm just here to help you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've done wrong, Lord, for sure. And I ask you to forgive me. And Lord, I want you to know, this is me talking. I want you to know, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. I don't believe I, I'm an accident. I don't believe I'm garbage. I believe I matter to you. I don't understand it all. But Lord, best I know how. Best I know how. I'm just telling you. I believe in you. I believe you died on that cross for me. I believe you rose from the dead for me. You took my sins. You made it possible for me to go to heaven. And I'm putting my faith in you. I'm having my heart changed today. And my mind is changed. I'm not going to believe what I believed before. I'm just not. I'm not going to believe in myself to do it or a church to do it. I'm going to believe in you and you alone to do it. Save me today, Lord, I pray. Change my heart. Change my mind. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed, how many with an uplifted hand? I'd never embarrass you for nothing. How many would raise their hand?